I am Kathy Wasner. I'm CFMA's VP of Member Services. And any questions that you have, feel free to type them in the chat or at the end, we'll have, we can have an open Q&A. So any questions you have, feel free to ask. So as we talk about you know, ways to get involved and what, let's start with why would you get involved? Um, you know, why get involved in an organization? Again, volunteering is a great way to build your brand. You can share your time to, to network and build skills that you might not get elsewhere. It shows that you're team oriented. Again, you can extend your network, you can sharpen skills and volunteering uh, shows that you like to keep busy. There's an expression, if you want something to get done, give, give it someone busy. Busy people tend to get things done. So it's a great way to just keep busy and keep learning new things. Um, another source that I cited when I was looking up, you know, reasons to get involved had these reasons, you know, it looks good on a resume. It's always good to be involved and, and you know, doing great things in the industry and great things for your own career. Again, an opportunity to meet new people and to network helps you in your career. Uh, you know, you can get some really good skills that can help your career, whether it be skills in presenting, skills in leading meetings, um, all those kinds of great skills. And it can make you more confident because you'll have experience doing things that are really outside of your comfort zone, outside of your day-to-day -day what you do. So it's a really good way to, to just, again, learn some new things that you might not otherwise learn. I'm not gonna read these quotes. These are two quotes on volunteering and the development that two of our CFMA members have gotten through volunteering. Uh, both of these folks have been speakers and authors and involved in a, a myriad of ways, but there is a lot of value, again, for you, the member, to get more involved in all of the great things that you'll learn. So I'll leave these up one more minute or so so you can read through them. Again, I don't wanna read them to you, um, but there's, it's really good feedback, again, member to member. This is what some of our CFMA members had to say. So if you're thinking, yeah, I wanna get new skills and I wanna learn new things, sign me up. Uh, but first step, you know, but first determine which opportunity is right for you. The, 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 we always tell people who wanna volunteer for something, follow your passion. There's lots and lots of things that you can get involved with, lots and lots of ways to build skills, but really go where your passion is. Do the thing that makes you happy, that makes you, you know, that, that you really are drawn to, and that will make it get easier for you to get involved, an easier task for you to do, and it will just make you happier. So really follow your passion. Um, to get the most out of volunteering, again, I'm researching some sources for here. This was some advice on ways to get the most out of volunteering. Be passionate and curious. Make a commitment of your time and energy. And again, if it's if you're following your passion. The, the commitment of time and energy won't seem like much because you'll be doing the thing that you love to do or you're really passionate about. And then think about ways where you can add value. Again, where <clears throat> you all have unique skills. How can you add that into the CFMA mix and really expand the CFMA universe by adding value? So we're gonna briefly go through all of these areas. Um, these are kind of the areas that have current needs for folks to get involved. It looks like a whole bunch. We'll go through them, we'll break them down area by area, so it won't seem like so much. And then um, at the end of this webinar, we will have, there'll be a slide at the end that has a, a link to a, a survey monkey that's gonna kind of match all of these areas. If you're interested in something, co copy down that link. I will also email all of you after this session that link. And if you wanna take a look through again, if there's something you're really passionate about where you think, yeah, I'd really like to get involved in that area, you can, submit that information in the survey, let us know, and then someone from CFMA staff will be in touch. So let's start going through all of these. So committees, most committees meet for an hour a month. Some meet a little bit, actually less frequently. So we're gonna go through all of the committees that currently have openings for committee members. So first is the chapter resource committee. This committee does meet one hour a month. And this committee, to be on this committee, you have to be a current chapter officer or a past chapter president who's still currently serving on your chapter's board. So that was a very specific little niche there. Uh, next committee that has some room on it and is looking for volunteers is the Emerging Issues Committee. This committee meets one hour every other month, and they're looking for folks with, with experience on issues that are emerging in the industry. Our Financial Survey and Benchmarker Committee, they meet for one hour per quarter. And this one's an even, even lighter lift. 
Um, this is really members who have an understanding of the CFMA benchmarking product, the CFMA financial benchmarker, and are really, you know, help, can help with some of the deep dive into that information. General members are preferred here, but associates are, are uh, welcomed as well. Now, our heavy highway committee, this is a committee that works on things unique to our heavy highway contractors. They primarily work on conference sessions and uh, heavy highway content. So if you're in that sector of our membership, you know anyone working in, in that area is welcome to be part of that committee. That committee meets for one hour per month. The next committee that we're gonna talk about now is our membership committee. This also meets an hour a month and this is open to every CFMA member, any member in good standing. So this is the one that's really open for, for all. One of the things the membership committee is currently working on is, you know, as you see, we have a heavy highway committee. On the next slide or two, we'll see we have a specialty trade committee for those members. We are looking at um, maybe there's a possibility that we should be doing more for our residential contractors. So currently the membership committee has a residential contractors task force that is diving into whether or not we should be exploring more offerings for folks in the residential arena and, and what those would be. So if you are someone who works with or works on residential projects and you might be interested in getting involved with that, that that's another way that you could get involved and again, get, have some really good input on the future of CFMA in that arena. Uh, this task force is just getting started. They haven't even had their first meeting yet. So there will be probably a few meetings a month for the next few months, and then we'll kind of go from there, but this is a brand new task force. Next is our publications advisory committee. Uh, this is folks interested in CFMA content. They do look at some of the items in our Building Profits magazine, and they meet for an hour quarterly. Our specialty trade committee, again, much like our heavy highway committee and what we're looking to do with residential contractors, this committee is for members who work in or with specialty in the specialty trades. This committee meets an hour every other month. Our suicide prevention committee, as you've all, if, if you've you know, been around CFMA for a little while, we've done a lot in the suicide prevention arena. We partner regularly with the Construction Industry Alliance for Suicide Prevention. So this is the suicide prevention committee that focuses on CFMA tasks. This committee meets an hour a month. You know, we're looking for folks here who have just have a desire to work on this topic and uh, again, get involved in that way. So that's another co committee that has some openings. And one of the kind of sub areas under this committee is a suicide prevention chapter champion. So we are looking for each chapter to have someone to be their, their chapter champion for suicide prevention. This person would help promote and support mental well being and uh, the suicide prevention efforts of C CFMA and CISP, the bigger you know, industry-wide organization, uh, resources would be provided. And this would be just to be the, the conduit to share that information with your chapters. And lots of great details and information is provided for that role. And I believe last but not least, I believe is our last committee, uh, Tax and Legislative Affairs Committee. They meet an hour a month and they are looking for members with experience in tax. So those are, those are all of our committees that currently are looking for folks to get involved. I'm gonna go through now some of our education areas that are looking for folks. So we're always looking for course presenters and this is really based on demand. And this varies, courses are anywhere from two to eight hours plus prep time. So the folks that would be a good fit for this is anyone with experience and in-depth knowledge on the, the course material. Presenting experience is helpful. Um, currently, we're looking for expertise in the, the areas on here, advanced cash forecasting, risk management, surety, construction contracts, revenue recognition, and taxes. Those are the, the topics for a lot of our courses. Um, again, this is a great way to just get some, some presenting uh, experience under your belt some teaching experience under your belt. If you already have some and it's something you really like to do, this is a great way to, uh, you know, to get more involved in that arena at CFMA. We're always looking for subject matter experts. Again, this greatly varies. Uh, typically, it's, it would be working on a specific project. So it would be two or three hours a month for a couple of months. Uh, sometimes though it, it varies and it's less of a commitment up front, but a longer term commitment. And this would be to develop content and courses, 
um, and publication materials and a variety of things. So we're always looking for people who are subject matter experts. We are looking for uh, some members to help us with the CCIFP study guide, uh, giving some, you know, updating the study guide. So this would be about an hour to two hours a month. And this would be de helping to develop resources for the study guide, as well as, you know, some other things like flashcards and some other items as well. So this would be open to anyone with knowledge of the domains for the CCIFP exam. Uh, the next thing we are looking for is someone to help us, or a few folks to help us update our treasury management series. The lift on this is about two hours per month, and that st starts from kind of now through February. So it's a, a shorter term project. We're looking for anyone with experience of big picture treasury management. And again, it would be to review the course, the existing course, and give it a refresh on some of the specific topics. And again, I know this is lots and lots of information. This is just kind of all the areas we have openings. I, I will send to all of you after this presentation a, uh, a link to a, a survey monkey where you can indicate if you are interested in getting involved in any of these, you can indicate that there and the details will be there again. So um, you don't have to remember all of this by any means. The next committee we'll talk about, the next thing we'll talk about rather is our speaker development subcommittee. And this is about two to three hours per month. We are looking for folks who have experience in public speaking and presenting. And the goal of this group is really to, um, <coughs> excuse me, to increase the number of CFMA speakers and to help them hone in on, on their presentation skills. Um, as I think I did mention with our subject matter experts, we are always looking for authors for a variety of different kinds of articles and different content. So whether that be in building profits, and again, <laughs> the commitment here, excuse me, varies um, depending on the topic, depending on the, the, you know, the subject matter. You do not have to be a writer who's, you know, a, a pro writer who's going to submit everything perfectly. Our publication staff will guide you and assist you through the writing process. So don't feel like you'd have to be a good writer if you, you know, know a lot about a topic, that's generally enough. And then you can work with our staff to help, help that get that written down. Um, in addition to building profits, our heavy highway and specialty trade areas do often look for content and articles that are specific to those segments of our membership. So we're always looking for folks there to write articles. So if, if you're in one of those segments and you might want to write an article. That's another area that, um, that, that you can get involved. Now, third-party reviewers. This is a great chance if you feel like, maybe I'm not so sure that I want to write an article, but you know, you're happy to review the work as a third-party reviewer. So the process for any of the CFMA content, you know, the, the author writes it, works with our publication staff to get the article into its proper format. And then our third-party reviewers take a look at the content and really look for, you know, are there any, is it technically correct? Are there any inconsistencies? Does anything need to change? So this is a really important piece of the whole um, publications and writing an article arena. It's kind of the, that final step to make sure that everything is reviewed and correct before it goes out. So this is another way that you could get involved with some of our publications. Now, the next few areas I'm going to talk about is around certification or on the CCIP certification. So anyone who gets involved with certification must sign a confidentiality agreement and a non-disclosure and a non-compete agreement because you might have access to exam questions and, you know, you, you can't, if you're involved in some of these things and you're planning on taking the exam, you can't for a certain amount of time. So that's something to consider just because you may have knowledge that others wouldn't, more in-depth knowledge of what's kind of on the exam and, and everything. So, which again, makes sense, but so just note that you may have to sign some agreements on that. So the first area with certification is the CCIFP item writing task force. This group meets about four hours a month and they meet also one, once to two times in person. So this one's a you know, little bit heavier commitment than some of the other committees and things that we looked at but this is a great way to really make your mark. You're writing questions for the CCIP exam. So you can really, again, make your mark on certification and on the industry. Folks who have a knowledge in any of the eight uh, domains of the exam 
are needed. And again, this is really to write the questions for our exam, like the next iteration of our exam. Then the CCIP item review task force. This also is about four hours a month with one to two in-person meetings per year. Also a CCIP is preferred. And this group reviews the, the newly written questions. Again, one more step before something's final, just to make sure they're you know, technically correct. There can't be more than one correct answer. So this would be a group to review all of the questions that are written. The certification accreditation committee. This group meets an hour a month as needed uh, in the busy time, of the busy certification time, January through March. They typically meet hourly for uh, an hourly month, uh, weekly for an hour. Um, so that's there's a little bit of a heavier lift at that time of the year. And this, these folks really take a look at the accreditation process. They look at the annual renewal application for uh, for CFMA certification to go before the ANAB body. Um, they look for the, you know, the non-conformities, making sure we're, the exam is, is keeping up with standards and all of that kind of information, just making sure all of the rules are followed. Training is provided on this one. So if you're interested in getting a little more involved in certification, if you happen to have any experience with third-party certification in the past, this would be a really good fit for you and for you to you know, help expand your, your uh, realm of knowledge. The next thing on here is the CCIFP chapter champion subcommittee. This group will meet an hour a month. This group as well is just forming and hasn't started their meetings yet. So if you wanted to get involved here, it would be you know, coming in right at the beginning. So there's you know, no, no real learning curve, no getting you caught up, you'd be right at the beginning. This group would be, ideally would be a CCIFP or past chapter president or someone who's familiar with the certification. And this is someone who'd be a little bit involved with their chapter. So the goal of this, subcommittee and the folks on this subcommittee are to keep regular contact with CCIFP chapter champions from the all of the variety of, of, uh, of chapters that have a chapter champion and help them to promote certification and help to develop some tools to help them do that. So this again, this is a, a brand new subcommittee planning on meeting an hour a month um, up front, maybe a little bit more until we get things rolling, but it should be more than an hour a month. And now quickly, I just want to talk, you know, you're all members of different chapters and every chapter is different here at CFMA. So I always like to highlight, you know, the best way to get to know the folks in your chapter, to get to know your local peers is to get involved in your chapter. Each chapter is different. So, you know, if you're not sure what committees or where your chapter needs some involvement, <clears throat> check with your chapter and they'll, they'll, I'm sure they'll be sure to let you know. But joining a committee, what better way to to get more involved, to meet members, to make local industry contacts. <clears throat> so again, committees vary by chapter, but this is the best way to really get involved in the, the governance of your chapter and the, 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 everything your chapter does. So consider getting involved in a chapter committee. Um, a chapter board member. Now these are the folks that shape the strategic direction of the chapter. So here you can you know, get some great skills where you can be seen as a leader in your chapter. You'll get some skills that can translate to being a leader in your company. <clears throat> so consider if you're in a chapter, consider being a board member. A chapter officer, now these are the leaders in your chapter. So here you'll learn how to you know, lead meetings, manage a board, um, all of the governance that's involved with running a chapter, you'll get some experience with that. So I actually have had members tell me that this has been very helpful in their careers as you're um, you know, going through your role as a chapter leader, a chapter president, and you're, you know, making sure that the, the function of the chapter works and dealing with all the committees and, and the different things that go on. Um, I've had members even tell us that this has helped them work with their own, their company had a board of directors, helps them work with their company's board because you see it from the board side. So, <coughs> excuse me. So that could be another great opportunity to get some leadership experience. And finally, at your chapter, you know, consider being a chapter speaker. Chapters often are looking for someone to speak at a meeting. So why not be seen as you know, that local subject matter expert, that local person who has a lot of great information. Um, often you'll speak in front of the group and then again, folks will see you as the, the expert in those, that field. And you know, a meeting or two or three or 10 later, someone has a question about what it is you presented. And they'll, you can remember that you presented on that and you can really be seen as a, subject matter expert. 
and also regional conferences. I forgot to mention that many of your chapters are involved in regional conferences. And this too, this is a great way to speak at um, a larger group. Most regional conferences are at least 100, 100 to 200 folks at a regional. So uh, nice, nice size group. So a great way to get some speaking experience. So if any, again, I know I, I know I gave you lots and lots of information, but I wanted to share all of the different ways that you can get involved and again, get some great experience in serving on a committee and working with other leaders, uh, speaking, teaching a course, developing a course, certification. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can get involved here at CFMA and add some great new skills to, uh, to your current skill set. If you would like to, if you're very eager and want that, this is the, the Survey Monkey link is up here. Again, I will send you this after this uh, session as well. So if there's anything in here that really piqued your interest where you think you might want to get more involved, please you know, click that link and submit that information. If you have any questions, uh, Mary Kelzinski or I are the ones to answer those. So you know, if anything comes up afterwards, feel free to reach out to either of us. 